And welcome back. Uh, this, of course, is Alpha G on K24 Television. It's time for us to get up close and personal. This guy, of course, is familiar. We've seen him on your TV, heard him on your radio. Probably saw him at a concert somewhere when he was screaming and shouting with his signature white towel. But as he does that, he's also a serious figure when it comes to the corporate scene, has his own uh, entertainment company, his own agency. And we're talking about all of that. And your new initiative he's actually putting out there because of his passion for the youth and what they're going through as well. Davison Geboine is the name you get if you me one shilling on M-Pesa. On stage and on you know, showbiz circles, it's known as DNG. Hey, my brother. Karibu sana. <laughs> Sanji. Welcome to the show. I like how you say my name, man. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> with, with so much Africanness, man. Lazima <laughs> ingeima, my guy. Watu wa juangi zangu, bili wanjua tu DNG. Uh -huh. I go up here, I'm like, hey, yo, jine yako ya pili ni mwenye sana. But ume why, ume why. <laughs> Sabi sana, bro. Karibu sana. Thank you. To the show. Good to be here. And, you know, a lot of stuff you've been doing, David. Yeah. Uh, across the scene. TV, radio, yes. and one of the tweets that came in was someone asking about radio. Yes. What's going on? They haven't heard you on the airways for a while. Yeah. What's, what's going on on that particular I was, platform? I was, I was working on 1FM, and 1FM mm -hmm. and changed hands in mm -hmm. terms of ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, it was bought by Energy Radio mm -hmm. in March. Mm -hmm. So effectively, our contract uh, ceased to exist. Mm -hmm. So I'm not on radio anymore. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm in talks with different players, and I see what's right. the best fit. Right. I think because of my, my brand, it's mm -hmm. a bit also limiting. The, the, right. you know, because most of the radio stations right now are doing Swahili. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. Just look across. Uh, so yes, uh, you know I'm not saying that I'll never come back on radio. In mm -hmm. fact, I, I, I miss radio so much. Uh -huh. Doing this media tour, it's always nostalgic right. walking into a radio station uh -huh. and being on the other side of the desk. How does it feel, by the way, being uh, the one to answer the it's, question? It's, I'm like, <laughs> you should have done this link like this, uh -huh. or you could have played this song. Uh -huh. it's, uh -huh. it's very crazy. It's like uh -huh. going to an event and you're not an MC. Mm -hmm. For me, I end up critiquing the stage, the lights, the MC. I'm like, yo, you could have done this better. Right. So it's very right. weird, man. Right. Um, but I'm grateful for the opportunities I have. Right now, I'm on television, mm -hmm. on a different TV station, Switch. Mm -hmm. I have a crazy show every Friday. Uh, mm -hmm. Me, Shafi Weru, and DJ Kalonji. It's a game show, mm -hmm. very different format. I think it's, it's a great challenge because no one else is doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I think the only other game show that existed in this country was what? Omo Pika Box, mm -hmm. when we were little kids. Right. Now we're bringing celebrities to play games that you wouldn't imagine them playing, so mm -hmm. getting them out of their comfort zone. And it's fun. Right. It's right. fun, yeah. And uh, on top of all of that, mm. David, you started off as a musician. Yes. Back in the day. In you know, 2003. Man, it's, it's funny because I was telling you before we went on. Yeah. Uh, on Sunday, I had one of your first students and you still had the baby dreads. Yes. You know, back in the day. I saw Anne an Kiguta being roasted on, on Twitter <laughs> with that she was DNG's video vixen before t television. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, we've come from far. I've come from, you know, I've been doing this, this entertainment How many years? business for now. I'm clocking my 16th year wow. in December. Because mm -hmm. that's when I celebrate my transition because my First song played on a radio station, then on Metro FM. Do you mm -hmm. remember Metro? Wow. I know a lot of young guys watching have yeah. never heard of Metro <laughs> FM. It was on 1.9. Uh -huh. And it used to play amazing Kenyan music, reggae. And uh, my song played on December 2003, straight yeah. after high school, man. Like, was... I finished KCSC. I went to the studio. I did my thing. And my song was on radio. That was a major move. Imagine. Yikes. At that time, my, my mom was like, hey, boss. <laughs> At that time, you know, a lot of music was, was perceived as, as something for failures. Mm -hmm. That if you are doing music, if you are a DJ, if you are mm -hmm. an MC, right, or right. gender shule, or gender soma, mm -hmm. music can never make you any money. That was the, the perspective then. Mm -hmm. But today, as you can see, right. it's a game changer, my brother. The guys are eating well from their arts. And too, the well, too well, too well. Come a But you know, speaking of the music, yeah, because um, you did that, you transitioned, did secular, and yeah. then it seems like what happened to the music bug? Did it Yo, stop? man, I think for me, music was very very interesting uh, dilemma because music at that time mm -hmm. as, and if the same crisis facing musicians mm -hmm. today is money right they're unable right. to monetize their craft so mm -hmm. for me i faced that very early in the game because i did an album i did a pre-album release tape then i did a cd mm -hmm. 16 tracks and i was selling i was you know mm -hmm. selling my, my my cassettes and cds in river road in churches mm -hmm. in schools you know at events i'd set up a desk and activate wow. So the activations I'm doing for corporate brands today as too far for entertainment. I you started doing long then. time, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had a team of sales ge executives who would do for me, uh, you know, the, the ledger. To mm -hmm. cassettes, Kumi, <laughs> Doido, oh, uh -huh. Sinibie, no. <laughs> you know, and our Lipa commission, uh -huh. 10%. Uh -huh. So I think the hustle was too crazy, man. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. then we're not making money that I had envisioned. For me, I had envisioned big sales. You know, sitting with people like Jemima Thiongo, right. telling, telling me she has sold a million cassettes. I'm like, Atamimi, uh -huh. come on, you as I mean, I as 
and you don't, and then it hits you, and you're like, oh my goodness, what's the return on investment? Because it costs right. money to put mm -hmm. out albums, it costs money to shoot videos, it costs money to package yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, me was doing, I was selling even merchandise, I was selling hey t-shirts. The, the merchandise I wear today uh -huh. that is not for sale. I used to sell mm -hmm. t-shirts, posters. I did merchandising like in 2004, 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. You see, so I realized it wasn't making money. And I needed to make money, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I have big dreams. Right. And, and I, I, you know, I, I identified another opportunity that was making money. That's emceeing. Right. You know, just as I used to go to clubs, have a good time, you know, walk into the DJ booth, hang around with the DJ, mm -hmm. chant, you know, holler my fans in, in the clubs. One of my boys told me that this is working, man. This is dope. So DJs would always give me the mic when right. I walk into a club. Right. Westlands, Kani, town, anywhere. And I realized this, this is something mm -hmm. dope. And that time, I remember reading in the newspaper on the bars, and people were like, uh, remember one journalist, Moniki Philip, uh -huh. he wrote, what kind of a career is a hype man? <laughs> you know, what is this phenomenon? Right. And he didn't understand it, but today there's no event without a hype MC. Mm -hmm. True. You Very see? True. So, so I created a craft around my energy, my vibe, mm -hmm. my, my fun times uh, aura, and, and I, I, I commercialized it. And that was my challenge to artists this year, you know, I came out telling people that, you know, yes, royalties has been a, a, a conversation since, since Poxy Pressure Day, it's since we were kids. A problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I was telling them, like, you need to think of other avenues of making money right. so that this earning of 2,500 shillings plus mm -hmm. 30 bobe kutua, I could miss it. What do you put your door? I only own shuguliki in your door. But, you know, miss what do you want to do? No, no. Right, right, right. But you can craft uh, your brand and package it in a way that it can generate income. Mm -hmm. And I think that's beautiful. Do you ever think you're going to go back and do music? I think I'm still in, en in music and entertainment uh -huh. in one way. Mm -hmm. Not uh, no, I mean as an artist. As an, <laughs> back to the booth. I don't know, man. It, it, calls me, it calls me all the time, man. Mm -hmm. I keep getting offers all the time, but maybe, maybe for fun. Mm -hmm. To be mm -hmm. honest, Jeff, I wouldn't do it um, commercially. Right. Maybe right. just as a hobby. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, just... Because the passion is still yeah, there. Yeah, the passion is still there. The vibe mm -hmm. is still there, man. Every time I'm on stage, it's lit. Right. But I don't know if I would want to do it commercially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Let's speak about the commercial side of yeah. uh, DNG. Because if you know Devi, you don't play with his money. Yeah. Ujama, Mukuchumbeli. Serious. Other summer. stories later. Serious. The summer. business of DNG. Because, okay, fine, you've moved on from radio. Yeah. And for you, there's always a business move. Yeah. You went and got an MBA. Yes. That's how serious you take your business. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. the business of DNG now? Um, I do many things. My first, I run an agency called mm -hmm. 254 Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been in business for 12 years. Right. I've handled big brands in this country and its region um, without naming them, but mm -hmm. like different categories from banking to telecommunication to gas and mm -hmm. oil. Um, insurance companies, uh, governments, mm -hmm. um, non-governmental organizations, name it, I've, I've been there, uh, FMCGs, um, alcohol beverage category mm -hmm. for, for many years. And we operate in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. We have been in business and, and we, uh, you know, our unique selling proposition is that we sell the hype. When we take, when mm -hmm. we get involved with a brand, or when we get a brief, it's our task to just, you know, take that brand to the next level and, mm -hmm. and look at it from a creative perspective and, and activate that mm -hmm. and bring it to life and make sure it's bringing the return on investment for, for, for the client. Let me just jump in right there as you talk about it because yeah. uh, for people who <clears throat> might not know, in the agency space, there are really big boys who play there as well. Yeah. And by the time you get yourself in, you, 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 you have to have proven yourself yeah. to fit in the market and to be there for 12 years. It's, some people will ask, 12 years ago, how did you manage to penetrate that space and make two five for entertainment what it is and survive, you know, a decade plus and you're still there. Several reasons. One, I think uh, quality. If you do quality work, people see it and people gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. um, even just our own unique sell selling proposition that, that it's all, we, we call it, we say that we sell the hype. Right. Meaning that we have an entertainment background. So we started off as an entertainment company doing events, mm -hmm. you know, consumer events to, na, to na a venue like KWS, National Park, and, and we charge 500 shillings at the gate, mm -hmm. or things like that, and, and, you know, getting corporates to come and sponsor those events. That's how right. we began. Mm -hmm. But along the way, one of our clients, uh, Big Telecom, then said that, you know what, we're looking for an agency. Would you want to be our agency? Mm -hmm. That was our first entry point. Because we never thought of even being an agency. Right. We're just doing events. You know, right. I'm a DJ, <laughs> MC, artist, I'm a hype artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to na hype kwa makampo, that distribute flyers, what na lipo, wana ingia. Mm -hmm. Ni gig. No, na? <laughs> but we, we came to a point where uh, corporates needed people who can pull numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's how 254 Entertainment as an agency came mm -hmm. to be. So it right. metamorphosized along the way. And then, you know, apart from that, it's just being a people's person, man. Mm -hmm. and, and just... 
always disturbing people. Like right. I'm those guys on, on, the, on if you look at True Color, my phone is red like <laughs> like those insurance it's guys. Spam. Yeah, it's, it's like spam man. Like na pigia wase, na umbi ni kona proposal, na unetisha meeting, na kusumbua Jeff pa kuni ge interview. <laughs> I talk about no, that because most people think hustle, that man. I mean things come to you because you're DNG. They don't no, know the number no. of calls, the number of Homie, meetings. It's, the knows that come as well. Being a brand, being DNG assists to some extent because mm -hmm. you're known. You have a reputation. Mm -hmm. You're a brand and people want to work mm -hmm. with people who have uh, a track record, right. so to speak. So it will get you through the door. But to land that LPO, to land that uh -huh. LSO, to land that check or that EFT into the bank, mm -hmm. that's the work now. Like right. I got to come to your office, I tell you who we are and what we want to do mm -hmm. and show you the convergence between my idea and your brand. Right. We look for synergies. We mm -hmm. look for convergence of mind and, and brand uh, ID and then see, okay, if we work together to this regard, what is in it for you from an ROI perspective? Because mm -hmm. marketing today or, you know, uh, campaigns, it's not like long time where we just used to create awareness. <laughs> you know, we do a road show, we create awareness. Uh -huh. Today, brand awareness. a brand manager or marketing <laughs> manager wants to know, if I put in a million shillings, Jeff, how much will I make back? Right. You have to quantitize Tell ROI. Me, bottom line. And it's in the contract, man. And mm. if you don't deliver, it's a problem. Right. It's, right. it's really comp competitive and it's very aggressive to, mm. in today's mm. agency business. Mm. And that's why you see a lot of agencies disappearing. Mm -hmm. Most of my counterparts either don't exist anymore or have gone into other fields. Guys have gone into real estate. Mm -hmm. Other guys have gone into import, export. Right. People have gone into different things because it's a very hard uh, industry to, to find yourself in and, and survive mm -hmm. today. And, and, and apart from that, you gotta keep innovating. Right. Like for us, we, we sat and said, you know what, apart from the commercial bit, what else can we do in this country, in this, in this region and in this continent? That's why we got into social impact because mm -hmm. we saw that this opportunity um, there's opportunity to, to provide solutions for our nation, solutions for our youth, for this mm -hmm. generation, and for this continent at large. So right. we looked at the youth problems and we were able to map out different thematic areas of interest from poverty and unemployment. That's why mm -hmm. we did Hustle Yako right. in 2017. This year, uh, we unveiled Punguza in February mm -hmm. because we've, we came across very crazy statistics around HIV AIDS prevalence. All 33% uh, percent of new infections are amongst youth. Mm -hmm. Things like uh, an, uh, abortions because of teenage pregnancies or unwanted pregnancies amongst youth. 33% um, of unwanted pregnancies ending up in abortions. And we all know that they're illegal in this country, meaning it's backdoor, it's crazy health repercussions. And we're like, wait a minute. These are things we can solve, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Because all other people who are telling youth uh, don't have sex. Abstain. to me chill. Watu wangapi wali chill. Few sana. Right. Na ata wale walikuwa kanisani, ata wale wa kanisa sani. Hawakuwa na chill. Hawakuwa na chill. Hana <laughs> mapasi ya wa chill. Uh -huh. Seme ukweli wa mambo. So, you know, we're not here to preach up stands to tell people what to do, but we're here to encourage them to be responsible. What does that mean? Because apparently here, Res mm. you know, DNG saying, Punguza, yeah. he wants or she wants to hear you telling their son or daughter, stop, no. stop this until to, you're 18. To, to be frank, uh, Jeff, it's not possible to, to preach abstinence to a generation that is already sexually active, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But we can show them a, a direction they can take that even though they want to am lambez or am the whole day, mm -hmm. they can be responsible. Responsibility means that, uh, first and foremost, have, do you know your status? Mm -hmm. Have you gotten tested? Have you visited any health facility? Do you know that there are contraceptives that you can use? Mm -hmm. So that any sexual encounter doesn't result in HIV AIDS infection or STI infections that are at a million every day. Right. Globally, like a million STIs are documented every day globally. That's from CNN Health. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. Like people are sick out here. But you can't get them. I can't fit. I know what tool is. Are you safe? Are you safe? I'm not safe. Let's not do this today. But you can avoid those things. I missed my period. Every every chick nowadays on social media is a single mom. Unazani wanataka. Wasame potea man. No more gambegu no me bust. Right. Literally. So this is what you're trying to do. So, yeah, if like do it. We can solve this problem by you having uh, the lady, for example, having contraceptive or the guy using a condom, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Like so that's the conversation we need to have. Also that sex has been demonized, Jeff. For so long, like we 
view it as that thing. Like, it's so bad we cannot do this. Oh, 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 people are pretending. No one's talking about. No one is talking home. about sex. But mm. here in the crib, everyone is a, a, a sex scene comes on TV. What's one angle? Yeah, anger. Even talking about Buddha, that was in the Gazette, in the You know, people are pretentious. Mm -hmm. And we, I, like, I grew up knowing that sex is bad, or that's what I'd been told. Mm -hmm. If you hang around guys, or you don't go to school, you fail. You take what you want. You want to put a glue. Apa? You want to bag. You want to bag. You want to bag. You want to You know what I mean? Like. So that's how we grew up. And then you, you go to school, high school, nini manyege, eh, unapata, eh, ma, dem si wa ba. Uh-huh. Ni mba na. No, no, so unanza ku experiment, unanza ku, 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 you know, you're trying to find your self-identity, and, and it's ill-advised because you don't know how to do it right. Mm -hmm. So you find, you know, you got a kid with someone you didn't love, and it's a problem today, ma, drama, mm -hmm. or, you know, ish happen, and now you're HIV positive, and you're mm -hmm. living it with it for the rest of your life, and, those are consequences. So how do we, you know, empower the current generation of young people with information so that they can make informed choices? Right. That's what Pungoze is about. Right. We're not a pretentious campaign trying to tell guys to do what we know they won't do. Right. It's, it's a representative or representation of how they are because mm -hmm. so they won't stop. But they can do it right. So for you, when you go into a certain you know space where they are there, whether it's yeah, a high school, yeah. or whatever it is that you're going, what do you do? You we tell do. them that this, this is the contraceptives. Yes. This is what you can do. Yeah. Just we encourage them to talk about sex. That's the mm. beginning. Mm -hmm. Are you having sex? What one are you? Let me give you an example. Like we did an event for the International Youth Day at Gedo Rai. Mm -hmm. Very interesting with an initiative called uh, Youth to Youth Nairobi. So we partnered with them. And you know, for me, when I got on stage, that was the first thing I asked. So I asked guys who was having sex yesterday. The only or, or this year or, or this last six months, so it's like one, two, three guys lift up, lifted up their hands. But we all know that that's not that's uh -huh, not the truth, uh -huh, right? Right. right? So so that's where the conversation should begin. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not encouraging people to have sex, but we're like you know if you're going to do it, first know that there are their choices and every action has a repercussion, so that you make an informed choice. Mm -hmm. One of my boys got a baby when we were in high school. And my neighbor actually, and 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 now they mali pay a ball in them too. One time, so you know you should approach. Eh, eh. So to come on, so Buddha born to me a CD. So it's cause I trust, pale, ashu. I can't even be at the old them at the alikuwa vajo. So come at them the vajo, vajo is if at a ball. Those are completely as to what misconceptions exist, Jeff. Na mimi nikijua misconception na kufundishwa ni boy wangu na niamini jumi ni mzee wako sio kweli una do una bada bo mimi so si wewe unapata ball up na inakuwa ni ngori ya mta tunamo hiyo mta ningeota na switch ma swim card chalia patikana na zama mitini ndio tunatafutwa jumu mtu yeye alishwa na nani mabuda na knock kwako nini boy aliingia kisumu sikuja tu rangi so real problems for, right. in this country and you know, when you go and talk to them about they about love this. it Jeff. they love it. in fact they are like mbona mkukuja mapema and then a big question is like okay saw the jumu tuambia hivi hizi contraceptions contraceptives iko wapi ju ni si free you know, and right. that's that's one thing. Like I've been doing stakeholder meetings with government, county government officials, donor partners, saying we need to give access of these services to youth, and it needs to be free because mm -hmm. there are budgets for it. Donors sit on billions of dollars, man, for Africa. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and you know, I was in a meeting the other day with a, with a network of orga organizations, and I'm like, na lipisha se yo finje, kuchukua like the the, the injection. Mm -hmm. eh? uh, it's fifty shillings when it's it's subsidized. Um, and that lasts you between three, six months, and a year. And if somebody does not have 50 bob, you've seen even on news the people rewashing and right. reusing condoms. Sidi yata yabure, ile agava, ile sawa. So if somebody if doesn't have, have money, for... money to mm -hmm. buy at a ile shuabet, so 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 and you get a baby, believe me, you're digging deeper into poverty. Right. So it creates other social problems. Mm -hmm. Wezi, nini, transactional sex starts taking place. Ju, o dem lazma ishi, mtoi lazma adishi, avalishwa nende chuo. Sponyo na tafuto. Ay. Huo na sema nini. Na kuna levels, tofauti za masponyo. Kuna usponyo anakupatia Ferrari, finje so. Na kuna sponyo analeta lunch. Kuna warent. Kuna warent. Yani ni higher order. 
And what does that mean? Multiple partners equals to multiple exposure mm -hmm. of risk. And as all of this is happening, because you said like you've spoken to you know, different stakeholders, you've spoken to yeah. government as well. It's a journey. Devi, there was a time you were heavy on the campaign trail. Yeah. Uh, and the agency did well from yeah. that particular point in yeah. terms of business. You did well as well. But it seems like later, looking at DNG, looking at what the government is doing, yeah. you're not too happy with the government that's in place. Not at all, man. I think, I think w the government of the days are let down. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not afraid to say it because I was there for the campaign. And even the beginning, mm -hmm. but previously we had a plan and the plan was to get youth, youth in, into power or positions of power so that they, the, the, the country can be different and can be gov governed differently. Mm -hmm. But that didn't take place. It's, it's the same. I remember doing the parastatal appointments. It was the same old guard that we removed came that came back. Like what happened? What happened to the plan? So you're a sellout, this mm. they're sellouts, and if you look at how the country's being governed, there's nothing to write home about. There's mm. no legacy program. Do you regret being on the campaign and uh, no, selling a vision that didn't happen? For, people are always blasting me for that, and mm. I think I'll carry that cross forever. No problem. But I think it's also a, a wisening uh, a factor that, you know, now I'm wiser and now I know. So even, even if I'm in a room with, with stakeholders like government officials, I know not to take their word for, right. for it. Like right. if, if you come and say you're going to do a youth policy, do it. Who mm -hmm. to enjoy? And I'm that guy calling, me, calling them out because it's been done in other countries. Like I was in Rwanda uh, in March for a health summit. Uh, with Amref and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and looking at, for example, the, the, the model that Rwanda has, even the guys Mashinani who have, have no money like for their equivalent of NHIF who cannot contribute a single mm -hmm. shilling, still have free access to services. They have youth-friendly clinics where you can walk in as a young person who wants to take contraceptives and they don't ask you where, where, you know mm -hmm. how you, like I, I sit down with teenagers, man, like, you know, when we're in them town or in the schools or whatever, even on social. And, and they, they, they tell me really crazy things like someone wants to, to go and get a, pack of, a packet of condoms, but they walk into a chemist or in a pharmacy and they, when that guy is in that overall banner. The air of judgment. Judgment. You, you walk in and you just ask for Panadol and you walk out <laughs> because you can't get the guts right. to ask for what you need. So you end right. up doing what? Dry fry. No more abortions. No more abortions. No more abortions. No more abortions. No more No more abortions. No more Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think, even apart from government, I think I've, I've been challenging private stakeholders because they have budget. Government will never really assist mm -hmm. because, you know, poverty is a way of governing. Right. Do you understand? And if poverty is eradicated, they'll have no mm -hmm. tool. You know, like look at Kibera. Once you change that, who will be throwing stones? Mm -hmm. Are you going to leave your crib in West to go and demonstrate? Right. No. But the guys demonstrating have nothing to eat. So if you give them 50 shillings, to throw stones and approve the railway, they're going to do it happily. You know, I like you've come to that point because now the question begs. Yeah. Uh, we've had Kibra uh, by election is supposed to happen, I think, in November, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh, some talks of Chris Darling probably might be on the ballot. That's been going around on social media. Not confirmed yet. Yeah. David, do you think 2022 you're going to buy? People ask me that every day, man. Every time I'm on, on such platforms, I, I don't have, a, to be honest, I don't have an, an interest in politics mm -hmm. at all. I come from a political family but I don't have an interest in it because I don't believe uh, unless, and I stand to be corrected. I don't believe that you need to be in a political position to have influence mm -hmm. or to make change. Right. I don't believe so. Uh, we have people who are making the difference in the world globally from the Gates guys to Masai Ujiri mm -hmm. was here talking about basketball and a sport that can get kids out of poverty. And it's proven that the mm -hmm. NBA can do that. And this different teams have done it. Are, are they politicians? No. Nope. So what are we saying? Did, you know, I think it's more mindedness thinking that for you to have impact and change in your country, you must be in parliament. Okay. Nah. Okay. So, nah, so, so nah. for all those guys who are wondering whether you'll see him on the ballot, there's different ways that uh, that impact can be made, that influence yeah. can be uh, used, and he's going to be doing exactly that. As we leave, very quickly, we have 30 <coughs> seconds. Where can they get you online? Where can they get uh, the Punguza uh, initiative online as well, for those who want to be part of it? Well, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at Punguza KE. Mm -hmm. Punguza KE, like the page, follow, look at what we're doing, go to our bio section, understand what our rationale is, plug into the conversation, support, um, you know, contribute, um, you know, share, tell people about it. And if you have a young person in your life or in your space, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, what Punguza is and, okay. and they can be responsible. Okay, so and yours personally for those guys. DNG Kenya. DNG Kenya. Nico Kilamali, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Gia Pale to Zungumze. Um we also have a YouTube channel, two five four TV, catch this this okay. interviews, media okay. tour. Okay, fantastic stuff. And like you had, man, if you're looking for the real DNG, we don't to apple agency boss. Yeah, uh, nah, it could verify. It could verify. Could verify. Yeah, boss. Tick. To na chesa ju. Safi sana. Thank you so. David, thank you so much for coming to and sharing your story. More power to you as you take from Musa across the country, across the region. That's what's up, bro. Okay, Safi sana, of course. Up close and personal with Mr. DNG, wearing different hats, the different things that he's doing right here on the show. We're gonna take a short break. We're back on the other side. It's a Thursday. It's all about relationships and it's all about bromance. How does that thing work? And what's it all about? That after the break.